Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about glucocorticoids. This video is actually kind of like the companion video to my bronchodilator video. So if you haven't checked that one out, I'll put it in the description box. But let's talk about glucocorticoids. So what are they? They're anti-inflammatory agents, that's their purpose. They can come in oral and inhalation types. So we're gonna talk about the big two. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the inhalation route. So that's beclomethazone. It's used to prevent asthma attacks. And I underline the word prevent because I wanna make this perfectly clear. It is not to be used during an asthma attack, okay? This is used to prevent asthma attacks. So side effects could be aches and pains, congestion, a cough, a sore throat, a fever, hoarseness, and trouble swallowing. You notice a lot of those side effects are related to the route of administration. When it comes to patient teaching, we can suggest that they use a spacer and that they rinse out their mouth after they take the inhalation to prevent some of these side effects. We want to monitor the patient or tell them to monitor and then report to the doctor if any of these symptoms occur. We want to check for redness in the throat, soreness, or white patches. And then if they're using a glucocorticoid with a bronchodilator, which a lot of people will be, you want to teach them to do the bronchodilator first and then do the glucocorticoid second because it actually helps the glucocorticoid work better when you do the bronchodilator first, right? Because it dilates everything, it opens up the airway, and the glucocorticoid can do a better job. So that's important teaching. You want them to do the bronchodilator first, glucocorticoid second. And this is for the inhalation route. Now let's talk about the oral route. Let's talk about prednisone. So this is the drug of choice to be given orally. It's used after somebody's had an asthma exacerbation. So not before, not during, it's used after. And usually is given for less than 10 days. So this is not something that somebody's gonna be on long term. There's a lot of side effects for this one that aren't great. And that's part of the reason why we don't want patients to be on it for a very long time. So these include aggression, agitation, irritability, mood swings, irregular pulse. So their pulse can be irregular, it could be faster than normal, slower than normal. They can report headaches, shortness of breath, swelling in their hands or in their lower extremities, and weight gain. Important patient teaching when it comes to these you want them to take with food or milk because it will upset their stomach if they take it on empty stomach. And it interacts with a lot of things. So it can interact with uh, potassium depleting diuretics, um, insects, and then hypoglycemic agents. Actually, if your patient is taking a glucocorticoid and is on some sort of hypoglycemic agent, they might just cancel each other out and neither of them work. So it's important to know all the things your patient is taking as well, especially if you're giving this med. And some potential complications that might occur, bone loss, and that's why we don't want them to be on it for a very long time, right? So bone loss, hyperglycemia, peptic ulcer disease, that usually happens when they're also taking the NSAIDs, and infection. So you want to assess them and teach them how to check themselves for signs and symptoms of infection when they're on this medication. So that was my video on glucocorticoids, both inhaled and oral. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.